but in Spanish to see if I'm learning the presentation. All right, good morning. I'm Mr. Taylor. I'm your principal at McClymouth High School. I want to thank you for coming this morning. Um, also want to thank everyone for you know hanging in there with us, given the challenging situation that we're dealing with. But we have been working the last few days to put together something to continue our instruction for our students, which is first and foremost, the most important. Um, so with that being said, we're gonna talk about our locations and the opportunities we have put together for our students. For our ninth graders, our ninth graders will be housed at um, Bunch, Ralph Bunch, 10th and 11th graders will be here at West Oakland Middle, and our seniors will be at Westlake Middle. Okay, so again, for our 9th graders, it'll be Ralph Bunch, 10th and 11th graders will be here at West Oakland Middle, 12th graders will be at Westlake. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, still, we have a uh, kids from different parts of the town. Mm -hmm. They're going to various school sites. Westlake, Ralph Bunch is here. I'm not sure if anything been addressed in terms of if there's any conflicts regarding students coming from East Oakland, going to Deep West, or to the various sites. So at each site, we will have an administrator, and we will have um, SSOs as well. Your consulting firm Who's going to join the executive? And how are they going to, is there going to be someone who can write out for me and every fan here that this place is now safe and they'll stand behind that because too much has been happening with the contaminated water, with the selling water, and, and really I can't in good faith send my son back to an environment that is potentially dangerous to him. And we know about the history, the recent history of what's been going on in that. I have a son who graduated from there, and there's some issues with that. Because I even had teachers there tell me that my son didn't have what it takes to graduate. But if you're feeding him lead, and he's sitting, sitting in a household environment, what would you expect from him? And you weren't there. There's been a, quite a few principals that I've gone through and talked to. And now that this happened, I'd rather homeschool my child. I'd rather homeschool him and let him get through these last couple of months he's got and let him move on from it. Because that situation there is not acceptable. And I don't think any parent here is going to put up. So I want to know who, what consultant firm is doing the testing. And when they're done, are they going to be able to take to every parent here that this place is clear and we, we stand behind it? And we want to know that. Okay, so right now I'm focusing on the instructional program, and we're going to have somebody speak to that after we talk about the instructional program. Okay, all right. Yes, ma'am. Homes will be will be in sep separate locations. Our lunches will be different. We'll be coming in at nine o'clock once they're all in their classes. Okay, so you ever see up these other children? Will they on their topics? Right now, we've been coordinating with the with administrators here at each site to make sure that we keep our kids separate so there isn't any issues as far as co mingling. Okay? How will the Okay, so our, our, our support staff will still be with us. Our, um, our, our STC teachers will still be with us. So we're not, we're not losing the, the support services. They'll still be here. They're still gonna receive the services that they're supposed to receive. But that's a great question. Our resource teachers will follow the uh, students. So, the, so they will put them classes. Okay, so, okay. So they can share this with your children. And I went to Mac. I am a former alumni and my year had led. And I understand the stress, but y'all have to understand these, these teachers were not prepared. And all of these questions are very good questions, but they are, these are teachers that are not prepared because we wasn't prepared for this to happen to the water. None of us was. Because if we did, we could we, we probably could have stopped it. But it's not something we can control. So these questions are very good questions. But to be honest, they're not very smart questions. Because like these questions are, these teachers just gave us the whole plan of where they're going to be and what they're going to do. And, I, and I'm not trying to be rude, but, but 
We got we one do phone know that. call on Wednesday. And we know that. A generated we phone call. We got one on email. USB. Besides that, as we have the teachers know this is all district. they can do. I understand. It's not about the that. teachers right now, honey. As far as the parents, we received one phone call, a, a generated phone call on Wednesday, and an email. That's it from the district. We have, I've been getting my information from Channel 2 and Googling it. So I think the district is a problem. And the district so I'm not going to step up with the teachers. Because I'll be, they, they going through the same thing we've gone through. But at the end of the day, somebody needs to tell us about our children. And we're not getting no type of response from the district. Nothing. We know that the district has been a problem. It's not like we haven't known that. Okay, no question is dumb. No question is dumb. No question is dumb. Let's stay focused. All right. I hear you, I hear you parents, but instead of me just giving you information and telling you. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, uh, I, so a couple of questions, like first of all, just deeply want to appreciate you all. Um, I know that this is like a really difficult situation. Um, my, name, yeah, my name is Preston Thomas. Um, I've been in Oakland for about 25 years. I was a teacher, principal, supervised high schools, and now I'm the chief systems officer for the district. And I've really been supporting kind of the Mac community and the teachers to get classroom spaces for your kids up and running. Um, I wanna say that across the community, there's tremendous love and support for your kids. Like we have had so many calls, the principals leaning in to try to find locations. We had to find, and, and the teachers have started planning from day one as to what to do for students to get back into the classroom. And, and so I just wanna say that like, there has been tremendous outreach and support. Mr. Carls, Carson and um, Kenneth, the custodians that work here at West Oakland Middle, were here all day yesterday trying to get classroom spaces set up for the kids. So, and, and across the district, custodians and some of the folks came in to set up classrooms in all these spaces, so it feels like a classroom. Um, Mr. Taylor, uh, Ms. Umat, who is the principal at West Oakland Middle, all the principals have been in communication and are really leaning in to try to figure out a way to make sure the students are best supported. And so I'm gonna go over some of the updates that have been going on around testing. John Sasaki's here um, it, to also talk about some of, some of the things. He and I were both at compliance on Saturday. Um, to kind of figure out what was going on. We do have representatives from the uh, DTSC, the Department of Toxicology, Toxic Substance Control, and also from the county as well. And they'll be here to answer some of your questions around the technicalities around what's going on with the school. I personally was a science teacher, so I felt like there's a lot of misinformation out there. So I am not an expert, but I tried to listen to what the expert said to give you kind of some updates as to what's going on. But I definitely, if you have any technical questions, I just defer to them um, because they're absolutely the experts. We actually went to the end, which is there is a community meeting that's happening on Wednesday, and I just want to lift that up. Like, there, and, and thank you for your question. Like, this is far broader, and when, when talking with the superintendent about making the decision to close McClyman's for this interim period, definitely understand the way that the, the lead situation rolled out in the community, and we didn't want to make the same mistake twice. So we acted quickly, and within a couple of days made the decision to close the school temporarily so we could do the testing to ensure that all kids are safe. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through what I understand. This is my understanding of, of some of the reports and things that I've seen. We do have experts in the room that I'll, I'll introduce you to them in a few minutes if you have technical questions that you want to ask them. So, um, one of the things on Saturday, um, and I'll show you some of the testing that went on, um, the, and I'll get to the details about TCE, the, the trichloroethylene, which is the chemical that they found in the groundwater, and I'll give you a little bit of the history. But I want to let you know, they flew up somebody from San Diego with really advanced equipment to test every single classroom to make sure that there were no vapors in any of the classrooms. They went room by room with like sticky tabs after they went through the door to check each of the rooms and all of the tests came up that there were no vapors in any of the classroom spaces, which is great news. It's really, really good news. Uh, and if I, if you, do you want to come up and introduce yourself? But, so if I say anything wrong, you can correct me. Yeah. 
Hi, I'm Cheryl Powell. I'm with the Department of Toxic Substances Control, which is a state agency for part of the California Environmental Protection Agency. And we were there overseeing contractors hired by the school district to do this testing. The main contractor is Intertech PSI, and Dwayne Hartman is the consultant who flew up from San Diego with a specialty equipment. And I, and I got to talk to him for a little bit just to understand what's going on. He flies out to every single location that has these things happen with TCE, so he's absolutely an expert. In Mountain View, one of the areas where there's a lot of, sil in Silicon Valley, where there's a lot of computer industries that use TCE, there's huge cleanups going in those areas. San Diego, Memphis, this is not something just in Oakland. This is something across the state and across the country. So wanted to make sure that everybody understood that. Um, the next step of this is there are these suma canisters, which is like kind of the gold, that is a picture, okay. Okay, so this is the gold standard for testing. And they are setting up, they set these up today or they set them up? They're gonna set them up on Wednesday and this is the second level of testing just to make sure there's no vapors in the air um, in any of the classroom spaces. You can also see over here, this is outside, I believe this is on 28. Um, you can see these little white marks that are kind of like they mapped out areas around the school. They're gonna drill bores and they're gonna do some groundwater testing all around the school to check the groundwater and the building and facility. And so that's the testing that's currently going on. Um, I'm gonna pause right there and see if there's any questions about that. Yeah. So you keep saying the class spaces, but uh, they hang out outside the class. They hang out mm -hmm. on the shields, right you know, the and all the we had, we had two days of sampling. He was there on Saturday, saw what we did on Saturday. We started in the classrooms where people spend the most time. And, and where va vapors tend to stay inside. Outside there's wind that blows them away. So if there was a problem, we'd be most likely to see it in the classrooms. What about way so wrong? That's what, well, so, so on Sunday, we went to other rooms and we sampled the gymnasium, we sampled the kitchen, the, the cafeteria, we sampled the auditorium, any room we could get into. The weight room? I'd have to double check the weight room specifically. I know we did locker rooms. We did, we had over a hundred, we had about 190 samples from as many places as we could get to. Okay, but you and can't say for sure that you did the weight room. Let okay. me double check and okay. I can get back what to you. the water that they drink? We, we took a sample of the tap water from the drinking fountain and we put it in a bottle to let it equilibrate and screen it. No indication that there's anything in the tap water. We will test it and send it to a lab. We did samples near the pool. We also did an outdoor air sample in the plaza of peace. Uh, we did not test the water in the pool. That we can make that. Um, we also test the outdoor air on the football field. Are any of the people doing the testing an independent company? Because I come from the northern Midwest, where this has been done for years. They came in and said everything was fine. This is like Flint. Places like West Chicago, the land is went nowhere, and, so, it is, it is, and it is affecting the kids. The second question I want to know is that I keep hearing everybody say about the school. That school is pretty big, so obviously if it's under the school, it's a problem with the neighborhood. Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, let me answer both of those questions one by one. So the first question is, is this independent? Can you trust it? So these contractors were hired by the school district. They are independent companies. They stand behind their work. And you had both representatives of the state and Alameda County out there making sure it was done appropriately. And it was what we call screening level preliminary data. On Wednesday, he mentioned the SUMA canisters. That's gonna be set up, sent to an analytical laboratory, going through a lot of protocols to make sure that it's um, accurate and trustable. And one last question. On Wednesday, will we be able to find out 
where the council meetings will be held and who we can talk to to specifically go see about the testing ourselves. Let's say if I wanted to get a group of parents together <laughs> and try to go talk to the city to check out, to see if the, to see if the paperwork is legit. Who do I talk to about that when council, I find that out already? Councilwoman McElhaney already has information about that meeting on her webpage. Okay, but I can also uh, find about that from when they talk to her face to face. Yes, yes. So, um, you also asked a really good question about what's the plan for the community. And so the agency that I work for is one state agency that deals with this type of work. We also reached out to the Water Quality Control Board, which is our sister agency, also part of California Environmental Protection Agency. And together with Alameda County, we worked on a three-phase approach. Step one is the testing at the school, trying to get kids back in the school, demonstrate that it's safe. Step two is looking out at the sites that are nearby that we know about that might be potential issues. My agency has already been working on the lane metal finisher sites. We've had an active plan up there for the last couple of years. We've got data coming in right now showing how effective that cleanup has been. We're creating plans to step out and make sure that we've adequately assessed the community. So step, and there's a number of other sites that Alameda County's taking a lead on a few of them. They'll be sending out letters this week asking for more information. There's one that the Water Quality Control Board will take lead on. After that, we're gonna step out to a broader radius and make sure that we've assessed the impacts at all of the known sites nearby and that there's not anything we're missing. So we've got a we've got a plan. So um, I hear and discuss <coughs> government agencies. Um, my, my, yeah. So my name. I hear. I hear. And West Oakland has had challenges with all of the, uh, with all of those issues, environmental and social injustice. So I'm dealing well with the county. I'm the chief of the land and water division. Um, you know, can you trust regular regulatory agencies? Uh, what I can tell you is you have multiple regulatory agencies that are distinct and separate from themselves. So environmental health and uh, health care services agency for the county is not affiliated with the, the state. So you have different agencies, you know, helping each other and checking on each other. Yep. Um, and, and I think that's important. There are, as Cheryl was saying, there are contractors. They're just not any old contractors. They have to have the appropriate, the appropriate licenses to collect the data goes to clinical, clinical laboratories that are licensed. So you've got a lot of checks here. And um, I'm a regulator. So you can look at me and say, well, why do I trust you? Uh, I, yeah, I hear you. But I can tell you from the day we learned about this, uh, this has been my number one priority. And uh, both Cheryl and I are chiefs of our divisions. And we were at this school for two days straight working watching, making sure we thought samples were being collected, helping with uh, figuring out where samples should be collected. Uh, and that's really important to have all eyes and ears and from multiple different places looking because we hear you. Uh, I'm not gonna, I am not gonna gloss that one over. But tomorrow at six, I can get more notes than that. Wednesday. Yeah, and on Wednesday, uh, both um, Council Member McElhaney and Supervisor T. Person, uh, who is an Alameda County Supervisor, they are hosting this meeting. Uh, and it is a meeting to discuss what's going on here, but what's going on in West Oakland. Okay? I see there's a whole bunch of hands. I want to just. Yeah, I think you guys have a little bit of business I think I was okay on the instructional side, even. Um, there are there's, you know, there's West Oakland organization, West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project that like has a lot of this data and try to do a lot of organizing. So I do hope that out of this week and I can be around that, like Sister was saying, getting parents together. I think also students. I would invite you all. There's a lot of good information that like we're learning, and I feel like there's there's a movement right in this particular moment that we can kind of step forward and, and make you know really clear demands but also again learn a lot because there's a lot of information that is out there so i want to i see a whole bunch of hands that I'm, I'm tracking like one two three i'll come around i want to show just a couple of things because we're, we're we're talking a little bit about what the problem is and i just want to show you a couple of slides to understand what's been going on and then i'll come back to you over there sir um so this i want to share so this is actually the original site. And I just want to make sure that we all have a shared understanding of what's actually going on. Because it is far broader than just the climate. It goes beyond the community. 
This is the site right here that was in question that had the district start its testing initially. And it was related to right in this spot right here. If you could see this little red area, it's right in between the garden. There used to be a heating oil container that looked like this that was used to heat the pool. And about 25 years ago, they transitioned that over to solar to heat the pool, right? So like we were cleaning up this area right here. And in 1997, there was, we took a lot of dirt out. We pumped a lot of water out. We cleaned it and we were doing the final checkoff to make sure that the little oil spill that had happened right there was clean, right? So that's what we were looking for. And everything from that test showed up that all the things that had been done to clean that area, you can ask the experts, was clear. But one of the things that we had to do was we had to test the groundwater, which is deeper down, it's about 15 feet down, and we had to test the water in that area. And so there is a, just a picture, you can go and you'll start seeing these around the campus. There are these holes where they dug down to try to find the water sample, right? And that's where they took the samples from. There is, so then the question is, where is this coming from? And I, this is, I think, to his question and several other people that I've heard mention. There are three active sites around the school site that have identified TCE in the, in, that, that is at that location. And I don't know if you want it, but I pointed them out on the map. You can see that the climates is here. There's a site up in this area. There's a site over here. And there's a site over there. We don't know where definitively it's coming from. I just want to make sure that's clear. We, in the groundwater. We don't know where it's coming from. It's not in the pipes. It's in the groundwater that's about 15 feet below. But the way that the groundwater moves, it's moving generally this direction. So we do think that there's a, there's a site that we believe has a greater chance of being the location that the TCE is coming from. But it's not originating on the campus. Yeah, it's, it's a, a, maybe you could speak to, and then I'm still holding you, I got your question. I just wanted to make sure that I explained. Yes, yeah, site can be a confusing word. Usually what we call a site is some business that used TCE and had a spill. And so we've been focusing a lot of attention on lane metal finishers. It's an old plating shop. It's closed. It's been closed for, for a while. Um, we know they had spills of TCE. Um, in addition to what's showing here, there's also a couple old auto body repair facilities, a linen service. But those are businesses that might have used TCE, so we're looking into them. We know they had petroleum tanks, but they were never tested for, for this chemical. That building that you guys showed on there, that used to be the auto shop building right there. Wow. Those kids are housed in that building now. They eat in there, they get medical attention in that building. They hang, they hang out in there. It's a lot that goes on in that building and those kids come out in that building. Also, one more thing. They, if there, there was lead found in that water because they put in drinking houses to keep those kids from drinking the water yep. on the school. Yep. They brought in new houses. You guys are saying you didn't find red, nothing in the water. Well, there we, was something found in that water. Yes, there was. That, why would they bring those drinking boxes? What we were testing for over the weekend was just TCE mm -hmm. and chemicals like it that contain chlorine. We well, wouldn't a, have a, seen that. That's a problem too. That's well, a problem too. I know you're saying you tested it. One thing y'all bring in the professionals in to test it. Y'all can test anything that you want. Everything, exactly. Because if you leave it, y'all leave and say, oh yeah, it's all close to the rear. What do we tell the doctors when we take our kids I, I understand. to find out their, their what do we say to our physicians to make sure our kids are not affected with this? When we take our kids, is there a special test? Because we need to know if this stuff is in our kids' system or not. There's a lot of questions Are you guys going to reimburse us? There's a lot of questions here. There's a lot of concerns in this community. That wasn't fine. This is my child. So we have to know. So as many kids have died this weekend, it's different instruments that test different things. And so we focused on TCE this weekend because that's what's keeping the kids out of school right now. 
It doesn't mean we're not we're gonna stop looking once we answer that question. So there, there was a gentleman over here that's been waiting for a second. I've been dealing with you know wolves and stuff like this almost 30 years. So when I spill some wolves in my shop, and they come in, hazmat and stuff got to come in. And if you spill oil and stuff like that, you got to dig that up and clean it up. So how y'all clean it up? And where y'all dumping that stuff at? How long it been? Uh, you know, because I know it takes a lot more than what you're talking about. You clean it up, but you ain't clean. It, it don't seem like it's being cleaned up correctly. But if I spill some stuff in my shop right now, they come and try to charge me seventy, eighty thousand, clean up oil, spill the fucking ground. They, if you spill oil to go down the drain, that's a hundred thousand get there together, and they're not just taking it. So how y'all clean this up? Mm. So what's going on is these agencies are working to try and identify and go back and look at some sites where uh, petroleum was known to have been released because it was considered a petroleum underground storage tank years ago. Um, and now we're going to go back and see were other chemicals put in those tanks that we didn't know about. Bottom line, if you come back, bottom line, just come back, your, your, your initial test came back clean. Come back dirty. It's going to get dug up anyway. So, what's the next move after that? So, so you don't necessarily dig up contamination. It depends on where it is. Uh, on the site that uh, is up a block away, the Wayne Metal Finisher. The, if you've gone past that site, you'll see it's fenced off. It's the Department of Environment. So that's something they've been doing. Huh? They've been doing that. Yeah. So that one is in full blown remediation, and that is not through digging up soil. It's through some other type of remedial technology. We, what you have to do is try and figure out. What the, where the sources are coming from, so we can figure out what the appropriate remedial technology is. make a statement on that, because it's being monitored a bit, I can't remember your name. Cheryl. Cheryl, where can we find 
There's, there's a question here. I, I also wanted to make sure that the way that you're exposed to this is through the vapors. And right now, we don't have any evidence that there's vapors that are coming up into the classrooms and the spaces. That's what we're actually testing for to see if that risk exists. So you've been really patient, ma'am. Did you want to you ask your question? Okay, and then over here, and then there's a superintendent was to call out this issue because it's not just an issue that sits at the climate it sits in the surrounding community and I couldn't agree with you more that we need to partner around this I want to make sure this is I, 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 I want to let you know I am the district I want to, yeah, we have another question over here. Oh, oh, you still? Anything you say to Like a good leader, uh, somebody that can uh, lead this up, and so I just like you, you 
There's a couple more questions um, over here, and we've been waiting patiently over here, so we're going to go to your questions. And, I, and I, once again, I'm Preston Thomas, I'm the Chief Systems and Services Officer for the district. For the district. For the district, absolutely. So go ahead. The initial test that was done that prompted all of this, did you was it metric in numbers? So for the PCE, was it like a 10, a 20, 50? Was there enough? Because I heard a lot, but I never heard enough. There are numbers, actually. Dylan was out there overseeing it, so I'll let her know. So the the groundwater engineer. I'm the one overseeing that. So Cheryl and I are both environmental engineers. Uh, the initial groundwater samples there is a screening level uh, that the uh, EPA has put out that says if you are above, uh, we have this discussion. First of all, we use a residential number just because we want to be sure that we're being really safe. So the residential number is 1.2. So 30 is greater than 2. So that's where we start asking questions. And the way to think of a screening level you probably all driven into a parking garage and see the, the bar that hangs down saying, caution, uh, there's overhead clearance. It doesn't mean if your truck or a vehicle is a little higher that you're ne necessarily going to hit something, but it's where you start looking and thinking, oh, is this going to be a problem? So just because that 30 is greater than 1.2, it doesn't necessarily mean um, that the vapors are going to travel from groundwater through the soil, up and into the building, It's where we start asking questions. Because it exceeded that number, that's why extra testing was indicated. We started that testing over again. What we found indicates that it's not it's not it's not collecting. We do need some more testing. Can you say that loud? And what's the maximum amount that's allowed? Well, 
Two micrograms, five micrograms. I mean, if it was in your tap water, come on now, come on now. Hey, that's why we don't trust y'all. She studies What's accepted? What's it? What's it? I'm going to defer this. We have Uta Haman Bloomberg here, who's a toxicologist. <laughs> <laughs> So if 1.2 is the number, is the number that we're seeing in the environment 10 or 100 or 1,000? And so 30, when you're thinking in those scales, 30, yes, it's more than 1.2. It's not a lot more than 1.2, because we're not talking about 100, 1,000, a million. And so, um, so we didn't think it was really likely that the vapors would move through the soil into the school and collect. At 35, concentration that it's supposed to be at, you don't think it would do that? I've seen a lot of sites that have much higher concentrations that don't have a problem. But it's at the levels where we check. So we do have to check. I heard someone say the water for the grass. There was a, there was a, there was a uh, question about the ocean data. Uh, and when the data comes down, you will see these different numbers that will give you exactly what you're talking about. So for indoor air, 
there will be a number that says if you are above this number, you are th that that is a risk for groundwater when you drink if you were to drink it. There will be a number that says if you are above that number, you are at a potential risk. There will be one for soil ingestion. If you eat soil that has TCE in it, this is the number. Right now, the only number that we used was not the number that says if you are above that, you are at risk. It was a number that says in groundwater that says you should test indoor air to see if you are above the numbers that you guys are asking for. What is that number? And it, so that is the thing. That's all we have right now. We are going to have some data. Uh, by the, the, there's the next thing. We've done the preliminary screening that says you are not at risk in the indoor air. So we have preliminary, but we're getting additional data that's going out to the laboratory this week that will come back. And when we get that data, you will have a number next to it. So if the number says, you know, five in, in indoor air, it'll tell you what the number in indoor air is that's safe and whether there's a risk. So. You know, part of uh, what's difficult for us is all we can tell you right now is a number that was in groundwater that says you should go and look and start seeing is there anything else that you need to be worried about. That's that's why we started this. You will have those numbers. You will have that data. We will be very transparent. Are you guys watering the lawn with TCE contaminated water? This lawns are watered. Lawns are watered through pipe water through East Bay mud. There is no indication that there is any TCE in the drinking water. So you guys are using drinking water to water the the grass. I I don't know what what gets used. Yeah. Let, let me, let me, and like, two things. One, I'll get to your, I, I don't know the answer to your question, to be quite honest, like what's used to irrigate, but I can find out by this evening to find out what's used at the current meeting that's happening this evening. Um, I want to be, like, there's three hands that have been up for a long time. I want to say one statement, and then we're going to go here, here, and then over here. Um, one of the things, I, I did put this image just to kind of, like, because I know that it's very confusing, particularly given the past lead issues that were around the fittings that were in the faucet. So I just want to make sure that we're really clear around a couple of things. The water that we're talking about is the groundwater that is about 15 feet, 10 to 15 feet below the campus. It is flowing there naturally. It flows out into the bay. It is everywhere on the earth. There is groundwater that's below there. That's where the TCE is. Just because there's TCE in the groundwater doesn't mean vapors are coming up into the building, right? So just because it's here doesn't necessarily mean that it's it, it's coming up into here. It, it's not necessarily. It, it depends on the testing. It depends on what's here. It depends on how high the water table is, the, blood, the concentration. There's a lot of factors. That's what we're testing for. We know it's here. We're testing the vapors here, right? And in the pipes, the water comes from a completely different source. It comes up from the Sierras, it comes down through the pipes, and the pressure inside the pipes pushes out, so you wouldn't have groundwater going into your pipes. So I just wanna generally say, there's three different things that we're looking for. This is the area we're looking at, and we're checking to see if vapors are coming up. So I just wanna make sure that like, it is really confusing. I've had to study all weekend and kind of, you gave me a lot of reports and I'm reading through like to learn about this, but I just wanted to make sure that there's three discrete things. So we have a question here, here, and then over here. And I think, and there's another question back over here. Okay. This water here in the Bay Area, not just for not just for myself, the Bay Area period, California. It's worth it. That this year. If you pay attention to this ministry, you won't know anything, talk to people from church. It's the same thing. People are fighting about some of the other system. And tell them why to understand. Some people say, some people say, well, the whole Bay Area is protected. We're fighting together. It's not for the climate. It's the whole Bay Area. It's all over the land and money. The fight is over. It's up to us to wake up. I'm already fighting that. It's so big deal. We all got leaders. I believe you're found. I pray for people that's going to be hunting. People are dying. I know about the two young men that passed away at school. 
I know I'm a family feel. Because they know something happened at this time. But it's all over there. We pray for our children. I'm a grandson. My granddaughter goes to McClellan. I love McClellan's family. They helped my granddaughter. But I'm so sorry that people just pretend that we're in Nani Colors. We know exactly what cancers are. Been recently thrown in for years ago. We're just fighting about something we already got the answer to. We got to clean it up, straighten it up, and stop lying. Stop lying to the people. And then stop lying to ourselves. We need to be more responsible to each other. Show the love before we all leave here. The whole beer is contaminated. California is contaminated. I grew up here all my life. I've seen a lot of people. I just pray for people. The people want to fight. We need fight for it. We got the answer. We're very intelligent. We just got to use it. It's coming from the higher, the government, all the day. We're just the little people. Who cares about the little people? We're just a little part of the people that we're intelligent. We know the big people are being very stupid. Because we're watching the people. Our children are very smart. They have to know the truth before we know it. But they have to take over the truth. Not West Oakland, not California, not Detroit. Not Chicago, but the whole thing. We're going to have to clean this planet up. And we're going to do that with love. No fighting. Um, that is, I, thank you for your comments. Like, I, one of the things is I want to share with you there's a website, it's GeoTracker. And it, it does exactly what you said. It's not just a West Oakland thing. When you look at that, it's all throughout the state of California, all around the Bay, that this is not just impacting this community, it's impacting a lot of communities. And I think that the, the town hall meeting that you're having on Wednesday is an opportunity to talk specifically about West Oakland, um, because we want to start bringing it up here first, right? That's, that's the key thing. Um, we, we only have time for about three more questions. So, and I know there's a ton of questions. Like, I promise you we're gonna keep having this level of engagement. You had a question, there was a question here, and we'll, you'll be the last question. And then there is a meeting tonight at 5.30. Um, we really wanted to, to make sure, I just wanna bring it back. Two parts to this meeting. One, school's back in tomorrow for our students. And we wanted you to know where they need to go, that we're taking care of them, that we're, we're the school, the teachers have been doing an amazing job planning. It's not gonna be business as usual, but we're trying to keep it as usual as possible. And there's an ongoing fight that we need to continue around cleaning up this area in this neighborhood. So I'm gonna go here, sir, and then we'll go here, and then back in the corner. First, I appreciate the job of doing the kind of back in the classroom. But as far as all this PCE and all this is going, okay, we had a meeting last week. How you know he's talking about it? We had a meeting last week. Okay. Okay. We had a meeting, y'all coming in with me, but you don't have the information. You don't have anything yet. Stop having meetings because you're upsetting people. When you get your information and the right people that can answer all their questions, then you bring it all together. And we sit down and they can ask these questions and get an understanding of what's going on because we don't know if it's there or not yet. We got a preliminary. So what is that? You know? Nothing. You took a home pregnancy test, but you still need to go to the doctor. You upset these people? I mean, when you mess with people's children, I don't care if they're black, white, blue, purple, you're going to have a problem. There is a problem when you mess with people's children. Probably when you mess with mine. You know, so get answers before you come back before these people. Have what you need to have. And have the people that explain all these different things that they need to know. Also, an explanation of where you guys think it might have come from. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate this, this has been one of the hardest things in terms of figuring out what to communicate and what not to right because everybody's got a thousand questions everybody's trying to understand and I do agree with you like the children like everybody's children is the most precious commodity so I have to make sure they're safe that's why we closed the school so fast right to just make sure that we did the testing to make sure it was safe I was there this weekend they were there all weekend to try to do all the testing that we can flying in experts from all over the area so we are trying to do that and I think we will come out with all that information but right now the goal is to get kids back in the classrooms and make sure that they're safe and so we had two more questions, and then I can sit around and ask questions. Remember what happened on the point? all the testing, and then that testing was flawed. Okay? So 
Stop emphasizing all this testing when you still got a lot of unanswered questions. questions. That's right. You say we learn as we go along. And there was uh, carcinogens over him and Hunter's point. Huh? And the experts came in and tested. And they said it was okay. Then we found out they lied. That's all I got to say on that. Um, it was a two-part question, and one was that um, it seems to me that instead of taking the students on field trips or to another school site, everyone should be going to a hospital. Every hospital within our radius should be taking each one of these students in for preliminary issues for the health screenings prior going to anywhere else. Second part. You have your central kitchen, which is basically one block away from one of those um, circles right there. You have three different mechanic shops that have been in that area for over 30 years. This whole area, your, your central kitchen is also in the area of contamination. The same things that you're talking about here. And you say it's gonna be up and running for next year. Do you think everyone from the school district wants their food coming from this area? No. So a couple, like on, on two, two, to both points, right? Um, in terms of the, I am not an expert around the health, and, and, and we will, we are engaging in that question to figure out what can be done and what tests can be given to students and families. I don't understand, and I don't know if we, do we have, like, so I don't know what, the, what that is and we're, we're looking into it, right? So that's one. Um, as far as the central kitchen goes, there was a lot of remediation that was done around that area. Clearly, this is high, this is lifting up for us that we need to do our due diligence across the entire district, and so like that is an Thank ongoing you, thing. That Rebecca Littlejohn is here from our risk management team. We are looking at this seriously across the entire city to see where these areas might be, and we definitely don't want to put anybody in jeopardy. So it's a great point. I mean, we found this out about two weeks ago that on the on the Friday we found out Friday. So seven, eight, nine days ago was the first test result, okay? That we got back that said the TCE was in the groundwater. We just we made the determination to close the school on Wednesday, and then we rapidly moved to testing and flying people in to do the testing. And so this is specifically for climate, but we are aware that there's risk across the entire city. So we are looking at it. So they're not going to shut down our It's 10 o'clock. Did you want to make a couple of comments about the meeting? A couple of things just in terms of reflection. The I'm Lynette Gibson McElhaney, I'm the council member for the district. I'm the convener of the town hall on Wednesday night. And I've taken on to do the town hall, knowing that we're not gonna have all the answers on Wednesday, but we have to start sharing with people what we know, what we're looking for, and then what the next steps are. We have had a lot of environmental challenges in West Oakland for decades and decades, and y'all know, um, to the sister's point here, there's been a lot of dirt done over years where they felt, particularly when this community was predominantly black, predominantly poor, that we were expendable. So what the TCE find here gives us an opportunity to amplify that ongoing struggle in a way that we can really lift it up. There are some things that we suspect, and some of you all have heard about what businesses might have contributed to this. So we are appreciating the district right now for making those tests available. The county is involved, everyone is involved, so we can try to chase down the specific source of the TCE. But we know there are other issues, and that's the reason why I wanted to do the town hall. That's not, McClymonds is caught up in it, but it's not the district's responsibility or fault. It's almost like McClymonds is the victim here of neglecting the neighborhood. So we want to bring the county, because the county has primary jurisdiction over the health and safety issues. Like the city doesn't have an environmental division, the county does. We've reached out to our state partners because the state of California has the remediation and working through our nonprofit um, advocates, the West Oakland Environmental Indicators Project, we're even reaching out to the federal part, the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, to bring them into an answer. So on Wednesday, we're gonna learn a lot more of your questions, because I really believe that not one of us is as smart as all of us. So we're gonna lift up more questions on Wednesday. We're gonna try to bring in the answers to the questions that we've been hearing over the next few days. 
and hopefully we will have greater test results from the climate that will let us know that the air has been safe, right? I mean, that's what we want to test for. And what um, the principal and the superintendent wanted to make sure of was that the air has been safe and is safe. But without knowing that definitively, they wanted to be overly cautious and pull everybody off the campus while it was tested. Okay, so there's one way to be like, you're hearing these scientists saying, well, from the science perspective, it's like, we don't really think it's true. From the leadership perspective over our babies and over our staff, it was like, on, it might be true, even if it might be true, we want to pull people off the campus. And we know that that's been disruptive and it's been alarming. But I want to say that it really came from the place of, of what this brother had just said here, our babies. They wanted to just make sure the babies were safe. So on Wednesday, y'all, I hope to have more answers for you. I know that we're going to be there to take even more questions, right? And I look at the town hall on Wednesday not as the last, but as the first opportunity for us to get our arms together. And then I will just say, with this particular crisis, I will tell you what I'm advocating for. The climate needs to have a complete rebuild with the state of the art building, brand new high <laughs> today. So I've already taken that conversation to the state, to um, State Superintendent Tony Thurman, he's on board. And um, there is a proposition that's on the ballot for March 3rd, Prop 13. And what the superintendent told me is that with our strong advocacy, you know how we mount up at McClellan's, he'll make sure that McClellan's is first off the shoot for the new money to make sure that the design can be Number two, is we need a master plan for the remediation of toxins in West Hope. We've never had a master plan. I'm now getting all kinds of information about what we know about the water. We got the fishbone project. We got, we're trying to get the lead. There was a new settlement for the lead that's in the house. It's not quite like Flint, Mama. It's not quite like Flint. Our lead levels are as high as Flint, but we're not drinking it. The lead was in the paint on our old houses that we love. And so it's in our soil, it's in the paint. After 20 years of fighting, Oakland and Alameda County just got a settlement from the major paint manufacturers. And that money and education is gonna start moving this year. But we need a master plan. So with your help, we're gonna get the vote because I'm gonna bring forward a resolution asking for a task force for everybody to get involved and to give us the plan for remediation that we all deserve and is past due. So I hope to see you guys on Wednesday night and um, we're gonna keep the conversation going. And I know it's a lot of confusion. Pop, I know there's a lot of confusion, but I think it's better to keep having us come together so that we keep lifting up questions that we can take back to the scientists so that they can research it and come back with answers. But let's look at it as an ongoing conversation. We're gonna be as safe as we can, as quickly as we can. So I'll see y'all Wednesday night. Thank you. Her staff, her staff will be present. Um, the Congresswoman will not be there. She has been monitoring this very closely and is very concerned. What about I, I can't hear you. The mayor, the mayor, I've been advising her staff as well, and we're going to need her. No, listen, if, if, if I have to ask <coughs> I, I will just tell you, I've been texting her and updating her and talking to her staff, telling them what we need. But if you all want her present, I will I will make sure that she knows that. She, there we go. That I, I, will, I will just say, I didn't say Mayor come and be, but okay. Tomorrow, Archie will be here. What I'm hearing is that it's a thing as far as West Oakland. I don't live in West Oakland. So is this school safe, you know, for our kids to be here? Because it sounds like it's just not a McClimus issue, it's a West Oakland issue. Right. So, so what I what I want to say is that's what that's part of the question of why I'm bringing everybody to the table on Wednesday, and they're bringing me maps right now to sort of show me what we already know about environmental challenges. I will tell you more on Wednesday because I'm being briefed daily as well. Where are the harms? 
I will tell you as a West Oakland resident, I have known about our lead exposure for a long time. It's in the Bay. Um, Victor was born with birth defects. It was in my breast milk. There was all kinds of stuff that we need to know. And I want to go back to what she said. We've been dealing with a lot. So those of us know we got babies with asthma, the freeways, the the port, the diesel, all of that. And that's why we're gonna have Miss Miss Margaret and Brian come because they've been really on the fight to make Oakland healthy in terms of the environment for a long time. And I, and I understand that, but I just wanna, I, I don't feel comfortable if you just let my son come to West Oakland tomorrow. That's why I'm trying to make sure that when he's talking the district, you know, is it okay? You know, yeah. or you can't say that. Like, this So I can say that it's okay in the sense that everybody in the Bay are dealing with a certain level of these of these risks and challenges. It's not like going to East Oakland is safer, <clears throat> going to Fruitvale is safer. Every zip code, including those in the hills in Oakland, has lead levels, that's not TCE, the lead levels, that are as high as those found in Flint. The Bay Area needs a different level of investment in order to make us ultimately safe. Now, there's some people that I have yet to get to, maybe like this woman, she's a toxicologist, I've been looking for these folks, to start telling me about the levels of risk and what we should be communicating with each other about what am I at risk for, how do I, uh, you know, make a hedge against that risk, and that I don't yet know. So since our first and foremost, our priority has been, let's secure these children, let's make sure they let their learning can go on, let's get them into some environments that are safe and fun so that they can, you know what I mean? So like our field trips and everything, we've been working on that. And the district has been working on two sets of plans. One, the climate is safe to return to, so how do we get our kids back? Two, if besides McClellan's is not safe, how do we finish up this year successfully with, so our kids can stay on track for college and career? That's really been the first two focuses. I've raised my hand, Supervisor Carson has raised our hand and said, McClellan's, this other environmental stuff that's in the blocks and in the neighborhood, we need to bring the community answers. That's not on y'all. We're going to take that. And so that's why we said for Wednesday, which is kind of too soon. And at the same time, it has to be that soon. So we can start getting this conversation going. Yes, ma'am. And so we're going to be relying at this point, the, the test that the county is doing, the outside expert, to let us know if they see any indication of runoff or exposure to the other schools. This early test results are going to be very informative for what we need to do next. But we did not think it was wise to say to the little elementary school or to anybody else, y'all need to evacuate and disrupt too. Because the truth of it is, we've been doing this all right for the last year. We're like, let's just make sure we're not sending people into a panic, but that we start getting answers quickly and diligently. So, I think okay. So let's 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 make sure that we bring that back to Preston because that's a very important question, and that's why these meetings are important. It gives us an opportunity to find out what we all know and put it all in, in perspective, and then get get stuff fixed. I think there was a hand over here someplace. Yes, what about the damage control? Because as he uh, stated earlier that he don't want to bring his kids back to back, it affects Mac's overall attendance rate and stuff like that and its image. So what, like, how are we going to like solve that? Or like, when this is solved, what are we going to do to get students to start coming back to Mac for parents to feel safe enough to start bringing their kids back to Mac? So um, this is really a district question, but I'll just tell you as a community leader and my grandson is at Mac, so as a Mac parent. Um, one, <laughs> We, we know that there's something incredibly important about the community at Mac that nurtures our families. And so we've got to come back together. And like any family, you got to deal with the issue when it arises, and we all set a plan for it. So um, we want to, the best thing around damage control is to try to be as transparent as possible which I want to really lift up this leadership team because there have been times where people have tried to get the answers and come back with it fixed 
and didn't open up. So right now, they're like, look, you guys are knowing as fast as we know this is what's going on. We might have made a mistake in closing the school, but we did it because we love and we wanted to get it right. So we just gonna be family and kind of put that out there and we have to continue to reassure people that we're doing everything that we can to be safe. The, the other part of it is, I think that city officials and county officials have got to come and say what we're going to do for the campus and for the neighborhood. And I would like um, the district talk about specifically around how they're going to communicate to families. But all of you who are coming here first hand, because this isn't everybody, you have to continue to communicate with the other families and let them know how we're coming back together as a family, how we're going to get our seniors across that stage from June, and how we're going to make sure that a new climate is built because it's been like 30 years over there. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Jamal Gahan Khajan. I'm on the school board, and um, so I represent someone who's asking about the district school president. I just want to say that um, this is a really important and valuable place to be because it is larger, right, than just my clients and it's nothing I do. I cannot repeat all the things that um, Lynette has said. Like, they're so on point. I'm sorry, I'm not going to waste the time in that, but I think your, uh, which are y'all, I'm sorry. Gemini? Gemini. It is, I think it's really critical because it really is what comes out of our mouths and it's what comes out of our mindset and our attitudes about the climate. So this is definitely going to be a week and a time and a day and a every hour that when we're talking to one another that we're actually talking about what we know as opposed, and also looking at like, where's the place we're coming from around like talking about these issues, right? Are we afraid of our community? Do we want to abandon our community? I think not. I think that we can actually do some work to really change what happens in it. In this consciousness piece, I want to thank you, sis, for lifting up this idea of the consciousness of being woke and paying attention and doing this work with love, right? That is critically what needs to happen. What I heard big time was about people going to their um, doctors, going to their private care positions. You know, someone saying, you know, every child should be going to the hospital right now. I, I think, again, as parents, we're going to make those decisions around those things. And so I just want, that, that was heard. You know, the idea of do we support some testing to happen? All of those things are important and we should, we will make sure that happens. And yet it is on us to take care of ourselves, right? Our responsibility. So I just want to support people around doing that. And then um, I think I'm losing it. Um, but I, I really want to acknowledge the teachers. If y'all are still in the room, could you raise your hands? Teachers, 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 principals. Uh, um, I, just, I just, I want to say, you know, this meeting started out around what are the instructional needs? How are we going to make sure that our kids are through all of this? And so I know that our teachers, again, are visioning some ideas around how to engage folks to pay attention to their mental health, to take, pay attention to the trauma, to pay attention to the fact that there's actually still possibility and new things to be doing. So just like hopefully we can support ourselves this week and support our young people and really center them around what's going on. I hope that there's some amazing science projects that come out of this. I hope that there's some newfound engineers that come out of this, some environmental activists that come out of this whole particular process, right? Like we have got to transform this because this is our community and we have to do it definitely with love. And so um, to, and Ms. To Mr. Taylor, thank you, thank you, thank you for your leadership. And Ms. Bully, the AP's not in here, so I know those leaders have to take it on a bit. There's something I know that I'm forgetting, but I gotta go because I know y'all wanna go. Um, and I'll, um, yeah, I just, uh, oh, I know. I just want, and it's not as important, but I just want to acknowledge this meeting is on a board meeting. So on Wednesday nights, for the most part, you don't see me engaged because I am trying to do a board meeting. So I won't be at this meeting, so if, if there is the thought of where's Jamoke, um, I will be at a board meeting. But at that board meeting, our um, directors, um, our student directors in particular, have asked that um, Dylan, you, I, I hope you got that information. We want you to actually come. So, um, so we'll also at our board meeting be having a conversation and an update on the climate. Um, and, so, and so just know that we'll do that. It won't be as intense in terms of the county being present um, and, and what Lynette is doing, right? So we'll be doing from both ends so that the district is paying attention. And the very last thing I have to ask, and you just maybe just popcorn this out, what is the best way to be communicating? Because I feel like we put stuff on Facebook, I've tweeted some things, 
Um, today, I would have appreciated a lot more paper. I don't, I don't want to kill too many trees, but I would like to see the plan of the week uh, on, in writing. Like, I, I love to talk, and I can do auditory, but I also have to see things. So I think that that's really important for people to be really clear about how to get information to you is super, super important. So um, you can let me know or other people know. You know is it email? What is that case may be? Because we have to make sure that we're communicating really clearly. Thank you. Question. My question is not a question. It's just to remind us I'm faith based and I believe that God has the last word in all of us. And I just want to remind us as a community, those of you who are faith based, that prayer protects, it heals, and it changes things. And if that's where you come from, now is the time to pray together where two or three are gathered. So as you go out into the community, remember God has the last word. Amen. So, one, two, two things, and I, I have to step out to a meeting to plan for the nutrition, like to make sure that all the operational things happen, to make sure that kids get food and things like that tomorrow. I talked to Mr. Taylor real quick. We, uh, well, we're, we're going to improve that. Um, definitely. Um, I, I want to talk to Mr. Taylor. We really want your kids back in school. We want them at Westlake. We want them to come to West Oakland Middle. Um, we want them to come to Bunch. The teachers have been planning. They miss your kids. They want to get them back in front of them, learning. I, I just want to make sure that, like, we are really doing our due diligence to try to make sure that they have a robust program this week, and then we'll continue to update. I hear you around the communication, um, and we'll we'll try to improve that. And I appreciate your question so that we can get information out to the community in a timely manner. That's actually what the next meeting that I'm going to is all about. Um, both Cheryl and Dylan are going to be here for a little while. If you have specific questions and you want to ask them individually, you can. There also is another meeting tonight. Almost the exact same thing. We're going to be going over what's going on with the students, what's the academic program, um, so students and families know what's going next. So John will be here as well around the communication. So I'm going to step out, but I really appreciate you all for being here. I know this is really trying to time. Um, City Council member, like the way that you framed the issue was perfect for me. I just want to say, like, it is far bigger than the climate, and it's got to be a regional, national issue. And I really appreciate, like, the fact that you all are putting the spotlight on fixing this problem. So um, I'm going to step out, but it, there, there are definitely going to be some folks around that can answer any questions you might be able to have. Yeah, there's another meeting tonight at 5.30, uh, but it, it is going to be going over the exact same things that we went over this morning. So, But if you have other questions that you want to engage, please feel free to come to that. Okay? 10th and 11th, just a 10th and 11th here. Uh, and then ninth grade is at Ralph Bunch, and Westlake is for seniors. So we were being entirely transparent with the families inside. I've been communicating directly with them myself. Uh, and then I'm communicating directly with you. I mean, I, I wouldn't be talking to you and telling you the information that I, I'm telling you if I, if I didn't want to be that to be transparent. We as the district, if you, if you ask the county, the state, even the city, we've been leading on this. We've been as, as proactive about this whole thing as we possibly can. We closed the school, the superintendent so decided to close the school just to be proactive and, and careful and safe to make sure that, that everything is safe for our kids. Uh, and we just want everybody to know that that is, that is our motivation for all. We want them to know that we're having the meetings, we continue to have meetings, we'll have more meetings beyond tonight. We we'll let everybody know what's going on. So the transparency will be. And just about who is doing the what they found so far. So we have an outside contractor called PSI. I don't know what the PSI stands for. The outside contractor that was there with the state and the county, the experts at those levels, and they were doing testing all throughout the weekend, and then they're going to be doing more testing now. And they only found it in the groundwater. That's right. How did they find it to begin with? It was the removal. I've heard a bunch of so, different things. So, so, very simply put, a number of years ago, we pulled a fuel tank out of the water. All right, so. A number of years ago, we pulled a fuel tank out of the ground next to the gymnasium. That was there to 
contain fuel oil to keep it cool. We, we eventually switched to solar, so we didn't need it anymore. We pulled it out of the ground, we sealed it up, and then last fall we were doing final testing to make sure that everything was fine in the ground, that there was no spillage or anything else. We found no petroleum products in the ground, which is great, but in the process of finding that there were no petroleum products, we found that there was some to see in the ground. So that was last fall? That, that, that was last fall, and then we got the test results back two Fridays ago. Months later? Yes. So how long will it take to get these results? We, we expect to have, we, we've expedited this process, so we're hoping to get these results back by the end of the year. How are teachers being supported at this time? Well, one parent told me that grades were supposed to be turned in by Friday. That's obviously not happening. Well, again, you know, even whether it's the state or, or even locally in the district, we are, we are you know, taking extraordinary measures to make sure that the, the education process, the grading process, isn't at risk. We're going to give them more time. Uh, they've, been, they've been meeting and planning how they're going to handle this new situation with the seat of implementations. Uh, and what we're going to be doing as far as educating the kids goes. And so that includes really making plans uh, so that any testing that needs to be done and grades that need, need to be turned in, uh, those things are taken care of and, and we have extra time to do. I guess I'm wondering if, because we haven't heard from teachers, you know, parents have been able to talk, but you've been the main spokesperson for yeah. the district. Um, how are teachers doing? Are, is the work piling up? Obviously, this is stress for them as well. Yeah, it, it's, it's stressful for all of us. There, there's no question. And this is not a situation we want anybody to be in. We don't want our kids in it. We don't want our teachers in it. Uh, but, but we're assisting them as, as best we can, and, and if they have questions, they're coming to us and, and letting us know what their concerns are in this situation. And so we're, we're communicating with them multiple times a day, every day, uh, and, and then we're also having meetings with them. Right now there's a meeting going on on campus really to talk about what we're going to be doing here at West Oak Middle and the other schools. So we're, we're really trying to iron, iron out all those, those issues. And that's, that's really one of the issues about this whole process. We did it so quickly and so decisively that, that there are things that are going to have to be worked out kind of as we go. Depending on what the final test results show, is there a possibility the finals may not open? Because some of the people we talked to had that in the back of their mind. Like this, well, they sure. don't know it could be shut down forever because of this. Sure. It, it, well, we, we certainly hope it's not forever. Um, and we certainly hope that we can get it back open as quickly as possible. That said, if the, the final test results show something completely different from the preliminary test results, then we're going to have to look at that and maybe have it closed further until we do either more testing or we actually start remediating. One of those two things will have to happen if there is a significant problem. Hey, John, what is the difference between the preliminary results and the results you're waiting for? Later what is what? The difference between the preliminary so results. So if, if you and ask the state and the, yeah. and the county, what they say is that that Although the preliminary results were good, and they are generally reflective of what the final results will be, there's a different process for testing that they do. It takes a little bit of time. They were able to test it really quickly on Saturday and, and, and have, they had this machine, I don't know what it's called, but it's, it's there, they flew in an expert from San Diego to bring it in this machine and they could actually test and show results within minutes. So, but the, the, the more official form of testing like over a takes a little bit more. Yeah, you actually have to have this kind of drum, it's kind of a drum thing. Yeah. Sit there in the building for like eight hours and collecting samples just like that. And then you just send that out and test that. So it is, it is a more specific process for testing, but it generally reflects what the other guys are. And is it pretty accurate that the schools can be closed in the middle? I'd be very surprised if it opened before the end. Yeah, because we still have to get all these stuff in this. John, can I just confirm? Yeah.